But New Centurions is a 1972 film that dives into the lives of Los Angeles police officers. It shows their daily challenges and how their work affects their personal lives. The movie is known for its mix of humor, surprises, and touching moments. As you watch, you'll find many scenes that will make you laugh, some that might shock you, and others that could bring a tear to your eye. I first saw The New Centurions a while back, and it was an experience that stayed with me. It's a film that can make you think about the tough job police officers have. Now, I'm curious about your experience with this movie. What is your most memorable moment or personal story related to The New Centurions? Your stories are important, and we'd love to read about them in the comments below. Share your experiences and let's get a conversation started. The New Centurions is a movie from 1972 that tells the story of young police officers in Los Angeles. The film shows their work and personal lives over the course of their first few months on the force. The main characters are Roy Failer, a law student turned officer, and his experienced partner Kilvinsky. They deal with various challenges on the job, including dealing with crime and personal issues. The movie highlights the tough reality of being a police officer and the impact it has on their lives. It does not shy away from showing the hardships and the bond between the officers. The New Centurions did not win major awards, but received positive reviews for its realistic portrayal of police work. Stacy Keach and Scott Wilson, who shared the screen in this film, would reunite eight years later under the direction of William Peter Blatty in the Ninth Configuration. The film itself came to life just a year after the source novel, marking the author's transition from a Los Angeles police officer to a novelist. His first-hand experience from 14 years on the force informed his writing, setting the stage for the novel's adaptation into its cinematic counterpart. The cast featured several actors who would find significant success on television, shaping their careers with roles such as Mike Hammer, a chips officer, a Hill Street Blues detective, a Magnum P.I. helicopter pilot, a matriarch on the Jeffersons, a father figure on Gimme a Break, and decades later, a survivor in The Walking Dead. In a notable turn of events, Stacy Keach, despite receiving the highest number of votes for his role in Fat City, did not secure the New York Film Critics Circle Best Actor Award due to a last-minute rule change requiring a majority vote. The award was ultimately given to Lawrence Olivier for Sleuth, with Marlon Brando and Olivier both receiving Academy Award nominations, leaving Keach unrecognized by the Oscars. Isabel Sanford received her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame over three decades after her first major television role. The honor was bestowed upon her in 2004, celebrated by a large gathering of supporters and colleagues including Norman Lear and Marla Gibbs. George C. Scott's use of the term flim flam in a scene is a subtle nod to his earlier work in The Flim Flam Man, where he portrayed a con artist, connecting his past roles to his current performance. After completing high school, Isabel Sanford honed her acting skills at the American Negro Theater in Harlem and further developed her craft with the star players. George C. Scott's career took a significant turn when he portrayed Richard III on stage in New York in 1957, marking his entry into theater, followed by his film debut alongside Gary Cooper. The film in discussion presents a narrative that is entirely a work of fiction with no intended reference to actual individuals or historical events. The names and scenarios depicted are products of the creator's imagination. Sterling Siliphant, the writer known for In the Heat of the Night, also brought his writing prowess to this film, which included performances by actors like Scott Wilson. Clifton James, another actor from the film, was honored posthumously by his family who scattered his ashes in two rivers significant to them, the Clackamas in Oregon and the Hudson in New York. Meanwhile, Roger E. Mosley, who became a household name by 1976, shared his life with Tony Laudermick and their daughter, adding a personal dimension to his on-screen persona. Ed Lauder, known for his solid performances, was set to lead in Alfred Hitchcock's The Short Night Before Its Cancellation. Previously, Hitchcock had directed Lauder in Family Plot. George C. Scott, another actor of high regard, turned down an Oscar for Patton but accepted an Emmy for the price, highlighting his preference for the latter award's recognition of acting. In his role as a seasoned police officer, Scott donned the outdated eight-point hat, contrasting with the modern wheel hats worn by his colleagues, symbolizing his character's traditional values and long-standing service. Isabel Sanford, known for her comedic talent, showcased her skills early on at the Apollo Theater's amateur night during her teenage years. 
Ed Lauder, another cast member, shared the screen with Charles Bronson in multiple films, including Death Wish 3 and Death Hunt. George C. Scott, who portrayed the character Kilvinsky, was depicted as nearing retirement despite being only 44 years old. His uniform displayed four hash marks, indicating a potential 20 years of service with the Los Angeles Police Department, making him eligible for retirement benefits. In an early scene, Isabel Sanford appears as a street worker, marking one of the film's notable moments. Kitten Nadavid Ed makes her first appearance in cinema in this feature, performing as a go-go dancer, reflecting her real-life occupation at the time. Before her on-screen debut, she worked for Stella Stevens as a cook and maid. Her career took off in the late 1960s as a dancer in Los Angeles, leading to her winning the title of Miss Nude Universe twice in the early 1970s. This role opened doors to minor roles in mainstream films, followed by prominent parts in Russ Mayer's productions, where she was often seen unclothed. Nadavidad later gained fame as a sought-after burlesque performer, headlining shows globally. Additionally, an interesting fact is that Isabel Sanford shares her birthday with the fictional Judgment Day from the movie Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which falls on her 60th birthday. Ed Lauder, an actor with a solid educational background from Long Beach High School, made a unique mark in the film industry by being part of both versions of The Longest Yard, sharing the screen with Burt Reynolds in the original, and making an unexpected appearance in the remake thanks to Adam Sandler. Meanwhile, Clifton James, known for his role as Whitey, also left a distinct impression on audiences through his portrayal of Sheriff Pepper in two consecutive James Bond films, showcasing his adaptability across different genres. In the landscape of American cinema, George C. Scott's talent shone through as he stepped into roles once filled by Lee J. Cobb. His portrayal of Lieutenant Kinderman in The Exorcist Roman III and Jura Hash III in the Twelve Angry Men remake showcased his adaptability. On stage, his performance as Willie Lawman in Death of a Salesman was recognized with a Tony nomination, affirming his skill in theater. Isabel Sanford became a household name through her portrayal of Louise Jefferson, a character that resonated with audiences in the sitcoms All in the Family and The Jeffersons. Meanwhile, Joseph Wambaugh's writing success translated into financial reward when Columbia Pictures paid him a weekly bonus for the duration his novel remained on the New York Times bestseller list, amounting to a significant sum for his contribution to literature and film. In the landscape of 1970s cinema, a film featured actors who would later become familiar faces as law enforcement officers on popular television shows. Eric Estrada became known for his role on Chips, while James B. Sicking portrayed a character on Hill Street Blues that echoed his earlier performance. Stacy Keach also appeared as a police officer in comedies like Up in Smoke and Nice Dreams. Meanwhile, Isabel Sanford made history as the first African-American woman to win an Emmy Award for Best Actress in a Comedy for her performance in The Jeffersons. George C. Scott, an actor of considerable skill, was part of five films deemed significant enough by the Library of Congress to be preserved in the National Film Registry, including classics like Anatomy of a Murder and Dr. Strange Love. These films and performances have left a lasting mark on the fabric of American entertainment.